Hi, I'm Spooky, and today I'll be showing you how to make this simple side swiping track mat stinger. A stinger is a graphic overlay used for scene transitions. Track mat stingers make use of a track mat to indicate where scene A and B will appear. With track mat stingers, both scenes can be visible at once. The stinger itself is made up of two parts, the graphic and the track mat. The graphic is the topmost layer and can be used to cover up the scene transition lines. The mat is the black and white layer where black represents scene A and white represents scene B. When combined, OBS will transpose your scenes in place of the black and white while playing the graphics on top. Before we begin, make sure you have the following resources downloaded and installed. Adobe After Effects, Adobe Media Encoder, and a free WebM plugin located at the link on the screen and in the description. We'll begin by right-clicking in our project panel on the left-hand side of the UI and clicking on New Composition. For this tutorial, I'll be using a duration of 3 seconds, my frame rate is 60, my width is 1920, and my height is 1080. Alternatively, for working on low-spec computers, you can set the frame rate to 30, the width to 1280, and the height to 720. When working on a project, I like to import an image background. This isn't a necessary step, but can help you judge how something may look above a scene as you work. It also helps with creating the matte layer. I would suggest following along and importing two images large enough to fill the canvas and place them in your composition. Next, I right-click an empty space on the Timeline Composition panel and create a new shape layer. This can also be done by clicking Layer, New, Shape Layer at the top left of the interface. Once the shape layer is created and selected, click the Rectangle tool in the toolbar and draw a long vertical rectangle. Next, press R on the keyboard to access the shape layer rotations and adjust it as you'd like. I set mine to 25 degrees. After rotating, expand the shape layer in the timeline by clicking on the sideways arrow, then expand the contents. You should see Rectangle 1. Click on Rectangle 1 and press Ctrl D to duplicate. Grab the Selection tool and move it to the side of our first rectangle. Next, I'm changing the fill of the rectangles to a gradient. The fill and the outline are configurable in the top toolbar when a shape is selected. To cycle between a solid fill and gradient, hold the Alt key while clicking on the fill color. Here, I'm adjusting the colors and layer styles to match my VTuber model. I'm duplicating the shape layer because I'll be applying different layer styles to each rectangle. I set rectangle 1 to be visible in one layer, and rectangle 2 to be visible in another. Now I start applying layer styles and adjusting the color of things. I like to use drop shadows to give objects the feel of floating above the canvas. Once you're happy with the look of your shape layers, select them all by holding Shift and clicking on them in the Layer panel. Right-click and select Pre-Compose. I named my pre-composition Lines. Ensure that Move All Attributes into the new composition is selected.
Now, with the new pre-composition selected in your layers, click and hold on the shape layers in your composition window, press shift on the keyboard, and drag your mouse to the right until it is just barely off of the screen. Pressing shift on the keyboard locks the position to move only in the x-axis, preventing vertical movement of the graphic. Now press P on the keyboard and expand the position value. Make sure you're at the very start of the timeline and click on the stopwatch icon. The stopwatch icon enables keyframes, a form of automation that we'll be using to animate. There should be a small diamond at the start of your timeline. Move the timeline marker to the one second mark. Now adjust the X value until the lines are about one third of the way across the canvas. You'll see another diamond appear on the timeline. Move the timeline marker to the two second mark. Adjust the X values until the lines are two thirds of the way across the canvas. Another diamond will appear. Now, move the timeline marker to the end of the timeline. Adjust the X value until the lines have exited the canvas completely. You should have four diamonds on your timeline now. Hold Control on the keyboard and left click on each diamond. If done correctly, the diamond should now be circles, which signifies keyframe easing to soften the movements. I personally would like the stinger to move a little bit faster. So to do this, I'm holding Alt and dragging the length of the layer along the timeline. This reverse stretches the layer, effectively speeding up its playback from three seconds to two. You don't have to do this, it's more a matter of preference. Next, I'm gonna be creating the map for the stinger out of the background images that we imported initially. First, ensure that the layer selected is the top image that is visible. Select the same rectangle tool as before, except this time, because we're using an image and not a shape layer, this tool will create what's called a mat. A mat simply dictates an area on the layer that is visible or invisible. Draw a rectangle that extends above and below the canvas bounds off to the right side of the canvas where your lines are initially placed. Change the dropdown next to the mask to subtract. Expand the mask in the layer menu. Make sure that the timeline selector is at the start of the timeline and click the stopwatch next to mask path. Like before, you'll see a diamond appear on the timeline. If you notice in my timeline, I have the previous keyframes we created visible still, and I'll be using these as a guide from where I'll be placing my matte keyframes. Move the timeline selector to align with the first keyframe you made previously. Now use the Select tool and click and drag the leftmost points to align under the line graphic. Do the same thing for the following keyframes that you had previously made. Repeat the process to bring the mat off the side of the canvas with the lines. Now if we watch the playback, the alignment doesn't totally line up and needs adjusting. To do that, I scroll through the timeline and identify any places where the path is not aligned and align it. This creates a new keyframe. Next, I slowly scroll across the timeline to make sure the graphic and the border of the map that we created line up. If you see them become unaligned anywhere, adjust the pathing nodes as necessary. Next, we'll be converting the stinger into a valid usable format for OBS to use. Start by first right-clicking on your background images and applying a color overlay layer style to both. The image that is seen first should be set to a solid black, and the image that uncovers during the animation should be set to a solid white. Like before, we now have our white and black mat. Next, hold shift and click on both of the images. Right click and pre-compose the layers. Ensure move all attributes to the new composition is selected. Name the composition mat. Now right-click on the project panel on the left and select New Composition. I'm setting the duration of this composition to 2 seconds to match the length of my graphic layer that I had shortened. My frame rate is 60. The height should remain the same, but your width needs to be multiplied by 2. So, if your initial project composition is 1920 by 1080 or 1080p, you'll set this composition to 3840 by 1080. If your initial project was 
1280 by 720 or 720p, set your composition to be 2560 by 720. This new canvas is essentially the size of two singers side to side, the left side being only the graphics and the right being only the mat. OBS uses these sides to sandwich your scenes and graphics together. Bring your mat onto the composition and align it to fit on the right side of the composition. Next, bring your lines graphic composition into the new composition. Notice that it overlays the black and white when it moves. This will make the stinger display incorrectly. When I play back the stinger, the mat on the right is confined to its side, while the graphic on the left is overlapping the mat. This is because the layer that we animated our position movements on is directly on this new composition as seen by the keyframes in the timeline. To fix this, go back to your initial lines composition, select your lines layer, right click, and pre-compose it. For an example, I'll show you what happens if you leave all attributes inside of the composition. Notice that as I bring the stinger onto the timeline, none of the keyframes from the composition remained with it. Picking up from just before the incorrect example when we pre-composed our lines layer, ensure that move all attributes to new composition is selected. Name it stinger. This crops the canvas of the layer displaying only what we want to show but also places the positional keyframes inside of the composition instead of on the composition. Now drag the stinger composition onto your large double-sided composition and align it to the left. Playback should show them both play next to each other at the same time in sync. The stinger is now complete and we can begin to render. To render, click File on the top left, then Export, and add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. Change the format dropdown to WebM, and then click on the blue text under Preset. These are the render settings that I use at a snapshot. Under Image Settings, make sure the size matches the wider canvas that you created, which can be done easily by clicking on the check mark. Set the method to variable bitrate, uncheck two-pass encoding, check use maximum render quality, and ensure that include alpha channel is checked. Click OK. It's important to note that artists can use a number of different render settings. Not every setting has to be the same. If for whatever reason you can't run the stinger, for example, you can lower the bitrate to something like 5000 and then try that. There may be a slight noticeable decay in quality, but the stinger will run smoothly. Click the blue text under the output file to change the file destination. When ready to render, hit the play button on the top right. Once rendering is complete, we can test the file in OBS. On the right hand side, click the scene transitions dropdown and create a new stinger. Set the video file path to be the WebM file that you rendered. The only two settings that matter here are to ensure that use a track mat is checked and that the mat layout is set to same file side by side. Click OK and change scenes to see your new transition. If you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful, please press the like button and subscribe for more content like this in the future. If you're interested in free streaming assets, check out the links in the description. I stream weekly over at twitch.tv. If you're into VTubers, feel free to come by and say hello. Lastly, if you like the music in this video, feel free to check me out on Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play, or wherever you get your music. It's all DMCA free and safe for streaming and YouTube. Have a lovely day.